Do you ever have those things in your repertoire that you just feel like you couldn't live without? That's right, today we're gonna to be talking about what I consider to be some of my essential workups. So these are recipes that I've accumulated over time and experience and you know, learned to do them on commissions and stuff like that. And they're things that I've loved the finished look of so much that they've kind of become wrapped up into my permanent repertoire. I think we all have workups like this. So these are my top five workups that I couldn't live without. Right, first on my list is gonna be worn leather. You paint a lot of leather over the course of your life as a miniature painter, and I think generally sort of adding a bit of wear and tear and interest to it is a, a much nicer approach. So mine begins, first of all, just undercoated in black. And from there, I'm gonna apply a coat of Rhinox hide to begin proceedings, just all over, nice and straightforward. Next, I'm gonna get some Doom Ball Brown. And with this Doom Ball Brown, this is where it's gonna to start to get a little bit more technical now. We're gonna be putting some texture in towards all of the sort of edges and raised surfaces. This Doom Ball layer is probably the one where you can afford to be the most scrappy, the least accurate, because you're really just trying to sort of brighten up some of those raised and, and, and you know big flat surface areas and stuff like that. Pretty straightforward still. From there, we're then gonna go into some Mournfang Brown. And at the point that we start using this Mournfang Brown, now this is where we need to start being more careful. We're gonna be really targeting those areas where wear and tear would build up, where stretches would appear in the leather, where it would start to fray and get rough. And we're just gonna be dotting this Mournfang onto those areas to start to give the impression of texture. From there, we'll grab Jacaro Orange, and we'll just basically continue to refine this same process now, brightening up those same areas from previous, but using thinner lines and being more sparing with the paint. Finally, for the last bit, we'll get Iron Rack Skin, and again, continuing to refine, just building up towards edges and stuff, and really, you know, looking mostly to just place little pinpoints around and stuff like that. For example, if you're doing this on a belt, you'll really just be looking at maybe like the top line of it. But once you've got this all built up together, you can see it's a really cool, really nice little worn leather workup. Okay, number two is a lovely, bright, reflective, almost mirror finish, chromey kind of silver. I am addicted to this. I've actually got an entire chapter of Space Marines painted in it well, not a chapter, an army that represents a chapter, that would all, you know what I mean, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we're gonna begin this work up undercoated black and then base coated in Vallejo Metal Colors Dark Aluminium. Get a nice coat of that all over, keep it as even as possible. I put this on with an airbrush, but it works exactly the same if you put it on with a brush. From there, we will smash some gloss known oil all over the workup. That's just going to go everywhere on the surfaces, into the crevices, etc. And then just, you know, give it a little damp brush cleanup sort of thing just to make sure it doesn't pull too aggressively anywhere. From there, we'll then rebase with dark aluminium. And this is why it doesn't matter if you're too tidy with that known oil gloss, because this dark aluminium now is going to pretty much be recovering all of the flat surfaces, just leaving those recesses glazed, glazed in with that glossy known oil. Now we're gonna take some dark aluminium and Vallejo model color chrome, and we're gonna mix these two colors together and we're gonna to start to build in some highlights with them. You know, focusing towards edges, tops of surfaces, that kind of thing, the usual places where you place your highlights. We'll then finish that off just with pure Vallejo metal color chrome, just targeting again, reduced, you know, sharper edges, more raised areas, that kind of thing. Really sort of being fairly fine with it. And what you'll find with these metallics is because they're so shiny when they're built up like this, you actually don't need to be super accurate with your highlight placement because the amount of glare that they're gonna produce is gonna make it pretty much impossible for your eye to see exactly where the highlights are placed. And all you're really doing with this last stage is just increasing the intensity of the reflectiveness. But as you can see, when it's all said and done, that is a really polished looking metal workup. It's actually the most polished looking metal workup I've ever been able to find. Okay, our third workup is super beginner friendly in terms of how easy it is to put onto the miniature, but it's actually a specific thing that a lot of newer painters often tell me that they struggle with, and that's black fabric, although this same workup will work with other black surfaces, but they do need a little bit of texture because we're gonna use dry brushing here. 
So first of all, we'll start out with the miniature primed in black, and this is gonna form our first color anyway for the workup. So we'll just move on from this black primer, and we'll start to pull in now some Corvus Black. And that's gonna be used initially just for a nice heavy dry brush. We'll be getting that Corvus Black worked in pretty generously. And then from there, we're gonna move over to Dark Reaper. And again, we're still dry brushing here, but we'll be a little bit less generous. We'll be a little bit more focused on sort of tops and tips and stuff like that. We'll then do a third and much more sparing dry brush now, where we just add a little bit of white into that Dark Reaper, and we're really just trying to pick out edges and sort of extreme points of texture now. Then to really pick out some sort of fine little bits, and this is probably the one part of the workup that is a little bit harder, we'll grab just a little bit of that same highlight color, add a touch more white into it so that we're getting even brighter still, and we'll just use the brush itself just to pick out some fine highlights here and there. You can use the side of your brush here to make this a bit easier on some of those sharper edges, but if you do wanna place any highlights onto the flatter surfaces, you'll need a bit of brush control just to paint some nice straight lines on there. Workup number four is a beautiful rusted metal workup, something that I'm really, really keen on actually. It's gonna begin life undercoated black and then we're just gonna slop a bunch of Vallejo metal color dark aluminium on there. There's quite a few steps with this one so we can afford to be fairly quick. And don't worry about all the little bubbles that you can see in the Vallejo dark aluminium. If you dry it with a hairdryer or even if you let it dry naturally, they'll burst and what they'll actually do when they burst is form little bits of texture in the surface of the metal. So when we're going for a corroded look like this, slapping the paint on really quickly and encouraging those bubbles actually helps to create more of a sort of look of maybe galvanized steel instead of you know a nice shiny stainless steel from there we will then just mercilessly whack Nuln oil all over everything and this is the matte Nuln oil this time the normal standard one because of course this is a rusty corroded metal so we don't want it to be super shiny all over we just want a hint of that sort of metallic finish underneath everything but we want it to be quite dull now we're going to grab a bit of sponge. Uh, these sponges are spares left over from a miniature carrying case that I own. You can also find them in the backs of blister packs sometimes. Uh, sofa sponge works well for this. Artist sponge isn't too bad for this. There's a million sources of sponge, but what you're going to want to do anyway is just dip it into some Rhinox hide now and just start to sponge that Rhinox hide all over the more sort of raised, pronounced areas of the miniature. So these are the areas where the weather is going to be causing a lot of corrosion. Then we'll accent that Rhinox hide by also sponging on some Mornfang Brown, this time being just a little bit more sparing with it. So you, you want to sort of dab your sponge into the paint, get most of it off, and then just sort of be a bit more careful this time as to how you place it. Once we've got all of that on, you can already see that we're starting to get something that looks a bit like corroded metal. We're on our way to a good workup already. But what I want to do now is a little dry brush with some Necron compound, and that's just going to sort of pick out the sharp edges. And this is kind of a normal thing that you'll see if you study corroded metals in life, you'll see that the sharp edges, the areas that get dinged a lot, will still look like fresh metal because they're being impacted and the rust that tries to build up on them gets chipped off regularly. Okay, from there I then want to get some sort of watery liquid rust deposits going on. So I'm going to grab Scale 75's Mars Orange, and I'm just going to thin this back. Um, you can use Lamian Medium if you want, you can use water, you can, whatever is your thinning agent of choice really, it, it makes very little difference. But what we're going to be doing here is basically placing this very thinned Scale 75 Mars Orange into the recesses. It's kind of like a panel shade, but we can be a little bit more reckless here because we don't really need to tidy this up. Anywhere that it sort of tea stains on the surface and, and leaves little marks and stuff it's just going to continue to add to our look of corrosion so that's actually absolutely fine and then we'll mix a little bit of Avalon sunset into that mars orange and again still keeping this very thin but this time we'll start to sort of target areas more carefully to produce a bit of accent so Try and think about areas where there would be more rust, areas where water might settle, for example, would probably pick up more rust. Um, you can also use this opportunity to sort of start painting a few streaks in if you haven't done already. If you're doing a rusty metal surface, you're gonna want a few streaks here and there. That's just part of the look. But as you can see, once that's all come together, it looks really fantastic. This is a lovely, convincing, rusty workup. And my final recipe that I could not live without is the hazard stripe workup that I've developed. So this is a little bit counterintuitive. I do this a bit differently to the way you see a lot of other people do it. The typical here would be to start with the yellow of the hazard stripes and then apply the black over it. 
I actually don't think that that method is the easiest way of doing it. So what I'm going to start out here with is a surface that's been prepared just with black. And first of all, we're going to get some Avalon Sunset and we're going to start painting in our hazard stripes with Avalon Sunset. At the moment, we're just going to be placing some rough guidelines, so these don't need to be particularly accurate or particularly straight. What we want to be, really be concentrating on here is making sure that they're spaced nicely. So long as they're spaced nicely, the next stage of the effect will go well. From those guidelines that we've then started to place, we're going to want to expand them outwards. So we're going to want to draw those lines out in both directions, roughly evenly, so that we keep the same sort of spacing that we had before. But as we do this, instead of painting them in as perfect straight lines and then chipping back at them in a separate step just paint them in as chipped lines this is actually easier to do because you have to spend less time painting a solid straight line so it's a lot easier to achieve the finished sort of worn chipped and damaged hazard stripey workup that we all want and it's also quicker and quicker is obviously just less stress then once we've got those hazard stripes in and looking nice, we're gonna to start to glaze some shadows into the yellow using a really thinned down Mornfang Brown. Mornfang Brown over Avalon Sunset works wonders for enriching it, making it look brighter, making it look more vibrant. But what it's also gonna do is give an impression that those shadows that we're putting in are a bit mucky, a bit dirty, you know, not make them look sort of perfect and pristine as you might get if you shaded yellow with say an orange. And then once we've got the Mourn Fang in to shade down the yellow, we'll highlight up the black section of the stripes by using some Dark Reaper, again in a glaze format. And this is actually going to take quite a while, so I'm not going to show you the entire process of me doing it, but one thing I will say is that as I get to sort of the end of the glaze and it's starting to get to its brightest fully saturated point, I do add just a tiny bit of white into the Dark Reaper as well and just paint some lines on the very edges of where the brightest point is just to sort of accent where the, where the highlight finishes but once you've got that in again you can see it's a really nice worn industrial hazard stripe look this looks like something that may have been in an industrial setting you know it's convincing it tells a story and that's really what we're going for so this one's a big thumbs up from me I love it and it's become a staple for me and there you have it those are my five essential recipes that I cannot live without and the reason that I have decided to bring these to you as something to show you is because I'm currently in the process of a really fun project for my patreon campaign I'm compiling a master book of all of my recipes that I've accumulated over the near 30 years that I've been in the hobby obviously this is going to take a very very long time to do but my hope is that once it's finished it's going to serve as a really cool and interesting reference guide that you can look to for inspiration so currently the I'd probably have somewhere around 20 recipes in it but I'm going to be adding to it every single week with new ones if that's something that you're interested in obviously as I say at the end of every video there's a link to my patreon in the description so you'll be able to check that out I'd also love to hear what are your favorite workups what workups do you have that you consider essential that the recipe for is something you've developed over the years and you're really in love with so get at me in the comments and let me know about that Finally, if you like the video, please click that thumbs up to let me know that you like it because that really helps with the visibility of it. And of course, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can enable notifications and that's going to tell you when I'm releasing new content. Now it's time to roll the end credits and for me to get out of here. So thank you so much for your time and for watching. And I'll see you in the next one, everyone.